Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to have you here today. I'm joined by my friend and, uh, I guess, colleague even, yeah. Chris Nall, and we're going to be talking about how Atria Senior Living has empowered their residents through voice. Um, there's a lot of technology involved there, a lot of compassion, a lot of uh, just really focusing on people. And so we're going to go through that today. So to get us started, we're going to talk about this journey. Um, Atria, if, if you're not aware, when we talk about residents, we're referring to senior living communities. So our aging population, where they end up kind of when they go from working full time to retirement. Uh, we're going to talk about Alexa Smart Properties, which is the group I work with and where voice comes into play there and how we went through and formed this plan to kind of enable these residents to empower themselves, to make their own choices, to control their own day, and to connect with those around them. But before we get started, I do want to introduce my buddy Chris Nall. I'll let him talk a little bit about himself. Yes, um, Chris Nall. I'm fortunate to be the Chief Technology Officer at HR Senior Living. We are based in Louisville, Kentucky, and we manage 350 senior living communities, about 40,000 residents. And I've got the fun job of how do you how do you not only teach seniors tech, but how do we bring technology to keep them more connected, you know, keep them connected not only within the community, but to their adult children, keep them engaged, keep them active. So it's, it's been a, you know, both a passion project, like many of us have aging parents. Um, they're, they're right on the line of, you know, moving into senior living. And so we're going to talk a lot about, you know, the community aspect, the the journey, and then how we've also used this for, you know, trying to save staff, because like every company, you know, getting staff, um, you know, hired it these days is just extremely still difficult. We'll talk about more about that in a little bit. I think the staffing shortage is something uh, we're focused on the residents in this talk, but the staff are also very important. Um, and I'm Stefania Sharp. I'm a product manager with Alexa Smart Properties. Um, you've probably heard of Alexa. It's that device at home that you can yell at it to tell you the weather. Um, you can ask it to play music, set routines. And what my group does is we focus on how to apply that technology in other areas. So to get started, it's actually, I think, important to talk about why we're here, why Chris is here, what Atria does. And so if you think about your progression in life as a sense of community, so you start out with a community when you're in school, when you're in elementary school, middle school, high school, you create these groups, you have people you see every day. And then over time, eventually you graduate high school, you go to college, you go to work, your access to that community kind of starts to get less and less. You have to form groups purposefully. You know, I, I, I have people that I do K-pop dance with to create a sense of community, even though I'm terrible at dancing. And that extends into my job. So I have people I work with every day. I connect with them on, you know, what's happening in the news, what's the latest. I think there's TV shows coming out now I don't even know the names of, but they, they keep me up to date and they keep me connected. That sense of community then extends past your job. And it's, that's the group we're talking about today is, how do we address people going from, you have work, you're forced to be around people, not forced, I like my job. Um, you have high school, you have, you have university, you just have these natural communities. Well, how do I keep connecting with people? Because for me, people are kind of essential to my day to day. And so what Atria does is they empower residents to live their life their own way, but live it, their motto is live better together. And so, Chris, tell us a little bit more about Atria, kind of what you do, what you provide for your residents. Yep. Um, so we have, you know, independent living, assisted living. So independent living, these are apartments with activities, culinary experiences, um, field trips. So this is, you know, a good, a good segue into one of our communities. Then we move into both assisted living and memory care communities. So we are we're not nursing homes where you'll, you'll hear me say communities a lot because it's really, that's, that's the important part. We found people ate who, you know, age together better, live together longer, and that's been the big focus in our rallying call from HR Senior Living. And you also hear about, you know, engaged life programs. So part of this technology we've introduced, we've really built it into, you know, it's not just engagement within the community, it's engagement with their adult children, their friends, their, their hobbies. So keeping, starting to introduce this newer piece of technology to, to an audience that, you know, they grew up with, you know, the invention of the phone and then, you know, invention of a mobile phone, the internet. Um, so vo and, but voice has probably been the, one of the easiest ones because everybody's always grown up communicating with talking. So it's been, a, it's been an awesome journey and um, excited to kind of take you all through a little bit more how, how we partnered with Amazon. Perfect. And then 
just kind of to bring it all together is, is you know, so we talked about Atria, we talked about how they like to provide this sense of community, connection, empowering the residents, but um, how does Alexa Smart Properties come into play? Well, we are a fleet management solution for Alexa. What that means is you can have a lot of uh, Amazon Echo devices, you can deploy them in your properties. We actually support um, hospitality, healthcare, and senior living, and as you imagine, those use cases are all drastically different <laughs> um, from person to person. One thing I learned as I started to work with senior living residents and the communities and the community managers is that they actually have some very simple use cases that I was, I was surprised to encounter. One thing I like to talk about is for me, I, I think you've probably heard this from your friends or family or people you know or maybe even yourself. You're having a bad day and you go online and you buy yourself something because two to three days later I have a present for myself and I feel so excited. It's kind of just gifting myself something so I can look back and say, you know what, the day wasn't so bad because now I have this useless item I probably didn't need. And my poor husband has to listen to me constantly go, hey, is the mail here? Has it arrived? Did you bring my package in? I think he feels more like a courier in our house than actually living there. Um, but he does it every day because he knows how happy it makes me. So imagine my husband, every five minutes he's being asked, when is the mail here? Surprisingly, in senior living communities, that's one of the most popular phrases that they're asking. Hey, has the mail arrived? And if you think about community, that sense of connection, that mail could be letters from their loved ones, it could be notices from organizations they used to be a part of. So for these residents, mail is just an important part of the day, but they're also asking the staff every five minutes. And the staff love doing it. They love connecting with the residents, but also, can you imagine, in your workday, every five minutes, somebody comes over and interrupts you? It's really hard to do those deep tasks. And so that's what Alexa is about. It's about combining that communication aspect with also maybe automating some of the repetitive tasks, taking away some of the workload from the staff that could be handled by an assistant that can just answer these questions one off. Is the mail here? No, not yet, but I'll let you know, Mrs. Johnson. And so with Alexa Smart Properties, we have a couple of features on top of what you have at home today. For one, we do have the fleet management. So Atria is managing the devices, not the consumer. That allows us to have an anonymous experience. We aren't having people link their accounts. They can feel a little bit more comforted knowing that Alexa is not too into their personal information. Uh, we also have APIs for controlling the visual and voice experience. Um, we'll talk about that later, but up on the screen, you see examples of that ambient experience, uh, being able to push information even if somebody's not talking to the device. And then we have our suite of communication features. As I mentioned, communication is gonna get brought up a lot in this discussion. It's about how do I talk to people outside of the community? How do I talk to the front desk? How do I make requests without having to pick up a phone? Um, thinking about how people suffer from macular degeneration, from um, dexterity issues, and how voice can help them accomplish tasks despite of that. And then finally, you'll hear something a lot, as I mentioned earlier, with the ambient experiences called home cards. We just, that's the display on the device. And you'll find those are really key in scenarios where you want to convey information without kind of overtly constantly reminding someone. All right, so why is this important? Um, I think you get very few feel-good scenarios when you work for a technology company, but for me, working with Atria has been one of those scenarios. And the reason this is so important is because of that first line right now. 24% of community-dwelling Americans aged 65 and older are considered to be socially isolated. Um, social isolation and sense of isolation leads to heart conditions and heart failures, uh, increased mortality rates. So more than ever, if we can create that sense of community for these residents, connect them with other residents, connect them with what we call their adult children, uh, even just connect them with other people that work at Atria, that can lessen the impact of that loneliness. And then finally, there's a staffing shortage. As Chris alluded to, and as probably many of you have seen, uh, my father personally is a nurse, and I've seen the impact in the nursing industry on turnover and just burnout. Um, but thinking about it in the context of where the American population is at today. So by 2040, all 73 million boomers will likely be retired or considering it. Uh, 73 million, that's a, that's a very large number. To put that into context on what that means for staff, um, according to our Gentum research in 2021, there was a, a little over uh, two, six million staff in senior living. Six million, 73 million. 
The projection for 2040 is that it'll go up to 8.3. So if you think about it, if I just do it with the raw numbers today, that's about nine residents per one staff member. But you also have to keep in mind that one staff member does not do everything. You have um, care, you have front of staff, you have kitchen. So you can more or less think about it as one staff member's handling dozens to hundreds of residents every day. And so we have this shrinking staffing population with this ever-growing wave of boomers that are approaching retirement. And if you think about it in the statistics, as they're talking about starting in 2025, every day, 10,000 people will be eligible for retirement. 2025 is like barely a year away. So we have six years before this population starts to come flooding in, and you'll hear it referred to as, I think, the silver tsunami by some people, um, just all these people coming in for retirement. So with that in mind, and actually before I move on, Chris, any thoughts on just kind of how the staffing yeah, and, so, and the incoming wave has impacted so you? As a, as a CTO, my job's both employee productivity, community productivity, and, and with the staffing levels so challenged, you know, we, we have to, you know, check on residents certain times of day, depend, or depending on the regulations in that state. So we've got other administrative tasks that we've said, okay, how can we leverage technology where it's, it's not intrusive, it's something that, you know, it's very passive. And that's, that's where you'll hear the theme as we get deeper into this presentation on, um, you know, we want, we, we, we're not a hospital, we're not a nursing home, we're a community. And, you know, when you go on a cruise ship, you know, they're not knocking on your door a whole lot, but when you do badge in, they're, they're tracking activities. They're tracking, you know, even here as you go in and out, they're, they're tracking our activities, but very passively. And that's, that's, you know, another side of this is how do we, how do we use more of these interactions with Alexa? Even if it's just asking Alexa, um, what the weather is today. Well, that tells me Chris was up, Chris was alert, Chris is interacting with a piece of technology. So that's, you know, where we're also looking at our staffing is through peer interviews, how do we make your job easier? When you go in a room, what are you getting asked that takes away from your focus on the care of the resident? You know, not that it's a non-value ad asking what's for breakfast, but it, it takes time away. You know, it may take two minutes to say what's for breakfast when you could be spending those two minutes going through care tasks and asking them how they're feeling. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely something where we're trying to augment staff, we're also trying to enhance the experience of the resident. All right, so now you all have a very large background on senior living communities, probably more than you had before, on kind of the challenges we're trying to address and also the challenge of how do I provide somebody this um, anonymity and this empowerment without interjecting myself too much. And as Chris alluded to, a lot of it is about checking in on the residents without making them feel like they're being, uh, you know, monitored and have a babysitter. So be first, before we even started building anything, I think everybody knows it's about what are your use cases? And most people I work with start pretty small. They go with how do I unlock, where, where is X in the property? What time is dinner? Where is this? Um, Atria really went big. <laughs> and so um, they wanted to tackle things from both a visual and a voice experience. Again, all about that communication. So Chris, you know, my examples always, I, I feel, seem quite simple. You know, is the mail here yet? What time is lunch? But for you, what were the key use cases? What did you really have to nail? So um, the way we approached this was where I, I looked at this t hospitality plus healthcare. So those are what hospitality use cases are out there, what healthcare use cases are. So from a hospitality, Alexa, what's for breakfast? What are the entrees? What are the, the, so you start getting in that interactive discussion. Then you ask, Alexa, what are the activities for today? What are, you know, what, what time is this activity? So you start to, you know, get on the hospitality side, but then maybe, you know, you're not feeling well. So we, we actually built in skills, Alexa, call the front desk. So instead of, you know, somebody pushing there, they have these emergency call pendants, and if we're licensed, we have to have those, and, you know, we do use a lot of those, you know, where they're not true emergencies. We've started to incorporate the Alexa to, to do that. Um, the other one, the big one is notifications, reminders, but, you know, a big use case, um, seniors love paper. They, they love paper. That is, that is going to be my battle the next few years as I roll more of these out. But if we, if we change our activities for the day, we actually have a system. We change it on the back end. The API feeds you know, their mobile app, which not a lot of them have mobile apps, 25% of mobile apps. But in every single room, you'll start to see these displays cycling through. Um, and then maybe, you know, maybe Stefania comes to visit you know, her grandma at one of our communities. Okay, she's at the front desk. They can actually send a message hey, to that exact room, to the exact residence, hey, Stefania's here. And they can also do that if there's another larger activity, 
you know, for the whole building, just reminding people, because it's a, a big part of my job is technology to remind people. Um, we want to we wanna get people out of their rooms. That's, that's where we see, what, you know, longer length of stay, longer, you know, extend of life um, in, my, in my world. Um, the other big use case that we also have, and we're not there yet, we're going to get there eventually, but the seniors that are coming in, they're smart homes. They're, they're leaving a smart home. So we actually have half a dozen communities that Alexa controls their lights, their blinds, their thermostats. Um, so it's starting, if you're staying at the wind, they actually, you know, use the same technology, but we've taken, you know, what, what the wind does, what, I know we got Disney in the room, some of the things that Disney's doing, and incorporate it on how do we, how do we help the life of this particular senior um, living in our community. So key thing there is, again, uh, also having talked with these residents, they're very big. He talks about paper, but what he misses talking about is it's this giant paper calendar that they print out every week and day, I think, that has, like, what's going on? What are the activities? I mean, it's just, it's just the, old, the, the sense of nostalgia that people are used to holding on to. And so really about how do you replace those? Because somebody's got to print them. Somebody's got to correct them. Somebody's got to put them up all the time. And again, a lot about these intrinsic staffing short, uh, savings. In addition, we, we keep talking about um, that bi-directional communication, so calling the front desk and sending reminders. So one feature that we found a lot of people enjoy is just the non-obtrusive reminders. Something pops up on the screen and says, hey, just a reminder, your ride's here for your hair appointment at coming up at three. Um, somebody, would you like to have somebody come by and get you and facilitating that interaction? But the other big thing, so these were the, these were the key use cases, and really what came into play there was finding the right partner for each year, because they've really got to focus on so many aspects of their communities, and that's where um, you ended up selecting Ava as uh, somebody to work with. What was it about Ava that really nailed the use cases for you? So Ava Health, they're um, headquartered out of California. They had a lot of experience with the healthcare industry. They, it rolled these out to hospitals. They were in several senior living communities, but. They were, they were re really, we found the leading experts to use the Amazon product in particular. And, you know, I got asked, why not use a Google product? Why not use an iPad? Well, these are, these are voice enabled and very simple voice enable. Um, they're, they're already widely spread, but they're also something that always stays plugged in. Sounds very simple, but if I roll out 150 iPads, number one, half of them will get walked out of the building, but the other half won't stay plugged in, won't stay charged. That's a massive problem. So, putting these in the rooms, so we really chose Ava because they, they, they came out to our communities and spent time understanding the use cases. They spent time, you know, getting feedback from our residents themselves. We actually have a resident in a San Francisco community who used to work at Google, and he is probably our, our expert on where they need to take the product journey in particular. And they've, they've been fantastic partners on both, you know, the, the ideation, but also how do we, you know, where do we go next? Because my, my end users, they're really not going to tell me where to go next. I have to propose, I have to look at problems that this piece of technology solves. And using Ava Health in particular, they've, they've, they've done that. They're already solving problems at other communities. They're also solving problems at hotels. So we've really leaned on them to help us drive that product direction for this you know, particular project. And that kind of like this partnership coming together with Alexa, with Ava, with Atria, um, we've got our first challenge. <laughs> as it were, is uh, it's one thing to put one or two of these devices into your home. It's another thing to put hundreds yep. and deploy them all at once. Um, and you're talking about things from having to deal with network traffic and congestion. Uh, I know at least one person in this room who has lived this journey. <laughs> and so, um, but Chris, you know, talking about what, what the biggest thing we really partnered on is how to do these deployments yep. at scale. And you actually, with Atrio, so what, for everybody in the room, um, one thing to keep in mind is that Wi-Fi is not prolific in senior living communities. As you can imagine, if only 25% are using their cell phones, probably even less care about the internet at this point. Um, particularly in Europe, there are entire sections of Germany, for example, that none of the communities have Wi-Fi. So how do we get a device that has no access to Wi-Fi that access? And Atria has been very advanced in this regard. So what were some of the kind of advantages you had as we were tackling how do we deploy at scale? So at scale, so I'll, I'll admit, when we started this two years ago, we were first movers, so it was very hands-on. But one thing we did was take copious notes of the problems to roll this out at scale. And, you know, the biggest problem, first biggest problem is network. Second biggest problem is the labor to do this. And it was labor intensive, and it was 15 minutes per device. So if, uh, I assume everybody here has an Alexa device. You plug it in. On your consumer side, it immediately 
um, authenticates with your Amazon account, and then it just, you know, what do you want to name the device? Well, fleet managing it, we don't assign it to a consumer. It is assigned to a room, it has its unique serial number, and that, that process was, like I said, 15 minutes long, running software updates. So with Ava and Amazon in particular, we, um, there's, a, there's a phrase called a gimbal walk in Lean Enterprise. It's like, walk, you know, walk the problem, um, go out to where the problem's at. We actually brought them to a you know, community in, called the Chateau. It's in, outside of Dallas, Texas, 200 rooms. And we showed them, like this, this picture's actually, here's how we set these up the first time. We, and we did this on purpose to, to identify the pain points. The pain points are, you know, ordering at scale, um, unboxing at scale, the setups, the setups themselves, manually one at a time. And we did this, this is, the first large one was two, a year and a half ago. And then how do we then get those in the rooms? You know, in a, in a way, you're, you're, introduce, and you're introducing something to somebody that's cautious about listening. They're cautious about the box. You have to explain how to use it. So um, what we did with Amazon and Ava is we actually got the process down to about five minutes. We created a, you know, centralized depots where we ordered in mass. They went to a depot configured by Amazon and Ava engineers and then deployed directly to the community. That way, when they're at the community, that has the Wi-Fi, they already know the SSID, they know the password, and they're, they're distributing it to the resident. And I, I actually intentionally, like when I would go to these, I, I didn't want to distribute to the resident, I want the, the care staff, the leadership there, because we wanted to look, it's a, it's a gift as well. It's something that we're giving you, um, we're gonna teach you how to use it, and we actually pre, would preload their contacts um, of some of their adult children, their frequent, maybe their doctor that they want to call, all within that device before deploying it. So, so really packaging that up to, you know, have the Wi-Fi, order in mass, deploy it, and, you know, big surprise where I'm deploying these, I don't have an IT manager at a community. I'm, I'm, I'm relying, usually, usually stereotypically it's the youngest person that works there that is, is in charge of it, but we really, we, we have this role called Engage Life, and we made them the champions about this. Um, they were the people we chose to give the devices out, because they're using this as an engagement device, as a device to push communications out, and that, that was, probably like the biggest lesson learned is, you know, we want, we, we don't want you to think this is a, you know, a spying device, a passive check-in device. This is something to engage. This is a new piece of technology. And by the way, it comes with your room. You're not paying extra to, to use this. So it was, you know, definitely, we went from our, you know, first 300 devices up to close to 1,800 right now uh, with a very streamlined process, you know, partnering with Ava and Amazon in particular. And you talked briefly about, you know, we're talking about technologically, how do we get these devices out at scale? But the big thing that Chris just touched on is, how do I get them adopted at scale? And so he alluded to some of these site champions, some of these engaged life uh, leaders. Chris, what was the, your secret sauce? You know, you kind of told us, like, you guys figure out how to deploy quickly, we'll figure out how to get it adopted. What was your secret sauce? Um, in working with the communities in addition to the... Ours class. was, when you think of any community, you've got the most social people of a community, whether it's grade school, high school, university. So at, at every community, there's, we, we, we call them champions, but they're resident ambassadors. They're the ones, if, you know, Chris moves in, I'm, I'm, I'm having breakfast with Chris. I'm introducing Chris to other residents. So they're, I, I'd say they're, they're, the, well, they're the influencers of the community. So we would you know, we'd approach it with first the leadership, get them behind it, and selling the, you know, engagement side, the communication usage. Hey, by the way, if you want to send something to 200 rooms, you're not printing off paper and you're walking into every room. You're just pushing a, you know, they're called cards on the screen. You're just changing what's on their screen. It's that in-room digital signage. So we get the leadership on board excited. We typically give out a few Alexis. Hey, you know, take it home. Get comfortable with it. You know, come back to me with some ideas. But really the resident champions were the ones where we, we would build use cases of, what's a problem you have? You know, with, you know, simple one, I don't know how to use this. Well, we would create you know, artifacts like handouts for them. We actually create you know, whole hour programs on you know, main uses of Alexa. But you know, the also thing, awesome thing with Alexa is Alexa can teach the resident. So there, you know, I, I love the phrase that Amazon uses, catapult events. So Alexa, what's going on today? And it would just, it starts their day. You know, well, today it's 75 degrees out, and we're serving, you know, fried chicken for lunch, and we're so that that would we would push that out to the screen, and that would start to engage the residents. And it all really started with the um, the champions, uh, and then locally we would really start to sell the staff on, okay, use this for a happy birthday, use this for a tour, push, you know, welcome Chris Nall to room 201, and that way when when it's a 
it's a different, anybody who's had to, you know, move a relative into senior living, it is a very, like, traumatic experience. You know, they, the first 30, 60, 90 days are extremely important. So what, what we try to do is use this to make them feel comfortable, make them feel at home, um, make, the, make it not intimidating. But then also on, on the flip side, like, how can we for their ID8 for them? And then the ROI, you know, this is the big one that we are, you know, I'm, I, we manage for, they're called REITs, real estate trusts. Um, what, what is the ROI? And for, for me, the, some of the big ROIs are engagement. So how do I, how do I move the needle of people attending activities? Um, occupancy, so is somebody wanting to move in my community because there's something unique about that that keeps them engaged? Um, the other ROI is really targeted the adult children. Hey, by the, you know, you could, you could buy your parents one of these, you could set it up for them, but we will do that for you. We're gonna set it up, it's gonna be preloaded with your contact info, it's gonna be preloaded with all the activities, and, and you know, this is another thing we're doing for mom and dad to make them feel very comfortable moving into our community. All right, so we, we talked about kind of like deploying at scale, adoption at scale, and I'm sure some people in the room are wondering what exactly does, where does AWS come to, into play? What exactly does that look like? Uh, so I'm gonna give you a very large architecture diagram on what a typical Alexa interaction in a community trying to serve this type of content might look like. Um, so typically there's multiple ways you can push and pull content from an Echo device. Um, here you'll see something we have called Alexa skills. And to explain what Alexa skills are, I like to think of them as like applications you have on your phone. We like to think of them as, uh, well, skills that Alexa knows how to do. She can tell you the weather, she can uh, adjust your thermostat, she can do various things like that. Anything that has an API essentially can become an Alexa skill. Um, and then to kind of take that a step further, we think about everything in terms of what we call utterances, things that you would say. What was really important in working with Atria and looking at those use cases is what, what did we expect the users to say and what did we expect them to say a lot? Because those are the use cases you have to get right the first time. Alexa is the male here. You'll notice also if you interact with a device at home, regardless of voice assistant, usually you have to say, you know, Alexa, ask, uh, ask Atria, what's for lunch today? You have to invoke that application by its name. Um, in our scenario in Alexa Smart Properties, we actually offer a name-free interaction experience for those core use cases. So it really is key, okay, what do we think they'll say naturally? And in senior living communities, they're not gonna remember these very complex utterances, so it has to be very simple. So breaking that down, an utterance like, what's for lunch, um, I like to think of them when we build skills, they have something called an interaction model and they contain intents, think of those as verbs, somebody's asking what is, they're looking for information, as well as slots, think of those as nouns, lunch would be a slot in this case. And so in this flow, you look at the bottom skill, um, the resident has asked what's for lunch, that's translated from speech into text, and then our automatic speech recognition and natural language understanding system tries to break down what are they trying to do. It will then see that Atria has an experience built by Ava that can handle menus and dining and all those options. It'll send the request off, and this is where AWS comes into play, into Lambda. Um, people use Lambda, they will use uh, functions, they will use, you can use pretty much anything where you can host backend code. And then they may uh, start to interact with the Alexa Smart Properties system. Um, this is where we do personalization. You'll see on here something called the unit APIs. So what Ava can do is they can look up, this request came from this random identifier. Let me go figure out which room made the request. Not which user, but which room. They can use that to then interact with Atria's system to personalize the request. Hey, Betty, um, happy birthday, by the way. Also, your favorite for lunch is gonna be available today. We also know that you like the flan, uh, and that'll be for dinner tonight. So they can personalize the request, um, but without ever having to put that personalization within the Alexa or AWS ecosystem. In addition, um, as far as pushing things, there, we talked about those cards or those ambient experiences. So let's say I want to let people know there's an emergency fire drill happening, or I think I've heard more than once about the boiler has broken down and people are very concerned that they're not getting timely updates about that. I've heard a lot of complaints about things breaking down and the residents not getting communication. So they could send a, a notification on the screen using our proactive suggestion APIs. They just send a text message up on the screen. They could also push full visual content. Hey. 
here's a big warning message, um, here is the text, um, and it'll stay up on the screen until they dismiss it. That way they can get alerts or ambient communication through those means. And a lot of times it's just something as simple as get me a background image, get me some text, and push it onto one or select number of devices. Um, so think about Alexa skills as ways to do those back and forth interactions with third party systems, and that's what we built today. In addition, we talked about the communications features. So this is something that's also unique to Alexa Smart Properties over just the Alexa you have at home. Uh, you can certainly use Alexa to say, call my aunt, call my mom, if they're another Alexa user. Um, but in addition, we recently actually launched and yep. Atrio is using our WebRTC suite of APIs where now they can have caregiver applications. They can have applications that the adult children can have access to, to do both video and voice chat. Um, you can have more elaborate discussions with external systems like the front desk or maybe calling a doctor outside. Um, this way they don't have to worry about the person on the receiving end having an Alexa or vice versa. and just makes the communication a little bit easier. So here you can see how you could do this. Not quite how Atria has set it up. Um, we have customers using uh, you know, Amazon's Chime SDK to do those digital connections. They will embed an application in their website. They can do telehealth. They could just do, hey, I just want to call my mom today, and then it would, uh, the video would come up on the Echo Show device. Uh, in addition, a feature they're not quite using yet is our private branch exchange. So that's just where you can connect a PBX in with your existing Alexa Smart Properties deployment. All right, well, we've talked a lot about the technology. We've talked about how they built it. We've talked about the challenges of scale and adoption. And, and really, it's, it's talking about, like, it's one thing to build something. It's another thing to get people to use it, which I think is a problem we can all relate to. Um, but there's a lot of Chris and I talking about how we thought this was successful, how it felt good for us. But I think it's helpful to also hear from, hear from the residents. Yep. And so we do have a video that kind of captures um, one of the communities that was impacted by having Alexa. So a little context, this is Atrio Newport Beach, based in, you know, right by Newport, New, a beautiful Newport Beach, for anybody's familiar with it. Um, independent living, assisted living, and memory care. So it's, it's about 200, 250 apartments now. So it's a pretty, pretty large community, a lot of walking around, not quite the wind, not quite that much walking, but it is, it is something that we've really tried to, you know, help the staff out, help the residents out, and then push that information out. So this was a, a fun thing we did earlier this year um, in partnership with Amazon. It's so easy. All they have to do is use their voice. Alexa, what activities are tomorrow? I found seven events. Atria Senior Living is 400 communities strong across the U.S. and Canada. We're the intersection of hospitality, healthcare, and well-being, with technology being the glue that holds it together. Atria Newport Beach is a lifestyle community, great dining, great activities, great care. So really lifestyle amenities that match people who've had amazing, wonderful lives. And the most important thing is to maintain their independence as they age. Our competitors talk about providing new nutrition and housing, and it's not enough. What we are learning is the secret ingredient for aging is discovering new things throughout your life. I can ask Alexa questions about today and what's going on, and she's really up to date on everything. We used to have encyclopedias that we had to read to find out answers to our questions, and now we just ask her. Quality is at the heart of everything we do. What that means is we are part of their extended family. So we're not only a home for them, we're the friends that they're gonna make, we're the activities that they're gonna have. It's introducing technology that'll help our residents stay connected and helping them to grow with their curiosity, but also giving them that feeling of independence. At Amazon, we build for older adults focused around technology, leveraging Alexa. And we're innovating and really creating solutions that are transforming the experience on aging. At Alexa Smart Properties, we're seeing that the intuitive nature of voice increases the adoption of technology with older adults and residents, as well as the staff and associates. I tell my friends, Alexa is not intimidating. It's so simple. 
That's the thing that's surprising because many of the new techie things we have to learn about are kind of confusing and there's nothing confusing about her. By implementing Echo Show devices in our residents' homes, we've been able to use voice technology to not only keep our residents engaged with the outside world, but engaged within our community. We've built custom Alexa skills specific to HRC Moving communities, activities, culinary experiences. Alexa, what's the entree for dinner? Here's Atria voice assistant. For entree today, we have shrimp scampi with pasta. Oh, I love that. Alexa is a game changer for residents because it lets them know all of the activities that are going on. They simply ask Alexa. It's easier because there's lots of things I don't have to look up. And since I wear reading glasses and I have to find my glasses to look things up, with Alexa, I don't have to do that. I can just ask Alexa the question of the day that I want at that moment. Partnering with Amazon, who also share our innovative spirit, has allowed us to quickly move into voice technology to drive more engagement within our Atria Engage Life events and excite staff. It's a piece of technology that they're very familiar with in their personal lives, and we've curated it for our senior living communities. Alexa, call the concierge. Calling concierge's phone. Good afternoon, thank you for calling me to Newport Beach. This is Heidi. Heidi, I'm waiting for dry cleaning to be delivered. Will you be see that it comes to my room? Oh yes, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. When an older adult engages with technology, their life becomes transformed. I've heard them say, it's like I've been living in a black and white world and now I'm in Technicolor. I had a beautiful experience when we first introduced Alexa. So I have a couple here and they've been married since the late 50s. And I asked them, what was their wedding song? They had not heard it in at least 20 years and they used to play it many, many times. Alexa was able to play the song. It gave them back that moment. For most, voice technology seems super simple. Partnering with Amazon has allowed us to bring this to an enterprise level and scale it up for all 400 of our communities, a level that no other competitor in senior living has been able to do. The Alexas have enabled us to drive further engagement and provide an industry-leading experience for our residents. We've actually seen a 50% to 75% increase in participation in Atria Engage Life events, getting our residents out of their rooms, while at the same time keeping them connected to their children through voice voice calls, through video calls, and we've made it easy. All they have to do is ask Alexa. <laughs> and that was spring Chris, not winter Chris right now. That's a big, di big difference. Well, uh, you know, I, a little background story. I had to watch that video 10 times so I wouldn't tear up on stage at the part where they talk about the wedding song. Um, I was unsuccessful, if anybody noticed, but um, it, it really is touching to hear about just how the residents are able to connect with each other, with memories from the past, with on-site staff, how they're able to just be independent. And um, kind of going into that further is what kind of results have you seen in terms of you were looking about how do we increase engagement? So, the, the, you know, you heard me mention 50-75% engagement. That has happened at every single community we've introduced this at. Before, you know, we had, uh, uh, you know, easy numbers. We had five people showing up for an event, pushed out Alexa notifications, 25 showed up. So some of them are, are much larger, but the, it is a, a significant jump in participation. Um, we have emergency call devices. So I talked about staffing. Uh, emergency call devices, people would use to ask questions. People just would use it to stay connected, not for emergency calls. And every one of those we would have to, you know, leave the front desk, go up there, check on the room, make sure, make sure they're okay. Um, some, most, some of our communities were seeing 30 to 50% reduction because they're, they're using Alexa for that interaction. They're using Alexa to call the front desk. Um, and then, you know, outbound calls, that is something that is continuing to grow. Um, the, the, you know, the, Adult children are the ones that really love it because it's, it's pre-programmed with their number. They can call in the mom's device. Mom can call them back easily. And then as, as we look at like the programming side, you know, how, how do we teach them to, you know, the number one usage is music, but you, know, you heard the encyclopedia example. How do we educate our residents on, you can actually ask Alexa, you know, one of them who is, you know, 
vice president to Gerald Ford. I mean, they, we were, some of these questions we were getting hit with, you know, they were loving it. They were loving the interaction. They are loving how easy it is to use. And, you know, as we look at um, the, the other piece of it is these devices today, um, I, I use the 30% of our residents have a cell phone. 100% uh, have this in their room, and of the 100%, every other day they're used. So, you know, think about you, you, give, you give your parents a piece of technology and they never use it. It just sits there. Well, th these, are, these are being used to answer questions, to call each other. They're, and, and we could follow that data and see that it is, it is you know, starting to gain more traction as more and more, senior, more and more of the you know, aging population that grew up with these devices moves in our communities. They're, they're really going to treat this as a utility. It's going to be, you know, as if a TV or cable or Wi-Fi was included. They're going to look for a voice assistant. And, um, you know, Linda, Linda was pretty awesome adapter, uh, adopter of this. You know, she, um, we filmed for a couple days with her, but um, it's, it's not intimidating. It is, you know, they've, people have been talking their whole life. Well, usually, usually from like, you know, year and a half on, but um, it doesn't, it's, it's not a thing. They can talk to it in private. They can talk to it in public. They don't, people don't feel embarrassed. And that, that's probably one of the most awesome thing, feedback we've gotten is, you know, hey, I don't, you've given me something that you don't really need to train me on it. You know, I can just read what's on the screen. I can read what's on the card. And it's, it's you know, it, it is truly simple as plug and play once we get this up and moving. And they're really good sources of feedback for you as well. I mean, you've had the, the intrinsic value of being able to open up these communications, but, and, and this is not something you were necessarily aiming to track, but what have you seen in terms of your staff and, and what kind of like, you know, hope does it give you in order for alleviating uh, that staffing shortage as well? So our staff is extremely excited about this because, you know, say you go in a room and somebody's having a bad day, you ask Alexa to play jazz music. Okay, now we start to calm the room down. I, I, have, I have an assistant helping me, you know, cheer up the resident. Um, I have an assistant helping me, you know, get them engaged in something that's gonna make them happy. So I think from a staff happiness, we've seen that raise, we do, we do staff surveys, maybe 20, 25% of, you know, at communities that have Amazon Alexas versus no Amazon Alexas. Um, so it's been kind of remarkable seeing that, you know, happen as part of this rollout as well, which was unintended. The other unintended usage of this was it's not, it's not a medical device. It's not, you know, I said earlier, don't use it for emergency calls, but people don't carry their pendant everywhere. You know, it's, our, our residents want to be independent. And we, we've had several examples of somebody's falling and they don't have their, it's, it's far away, there's no pull cord. So they've called out for help using Alexa to call then the front desk and we've been able to get staff there quickly. So it's just a, another you know, additional benefit of you know, the safety side of where, we, where we've been able to take this product in the last two years. And so that's, that's kind of where Atria has come today. And, and thank you, Chris. It just following this journey from, you know, we came up with some ambitious but great use cases all the way to the challenges of making the deployment. Um, and this is an ongoing journey as well. Like we're continuing to work with the communities. So Chris, kind of go into some of the future of what Atria is planning to do next year and, and beyond. Yep. So you saw, does anybody have an Alexa Show 15 at your house? Just, <laughs> all right. I, I have them as well. I love it. We were the first in the world to use those as portable digital signage. And when I say first in the world, as soon as we saw that product coming out with Amazon, you know, we came up, hey, we, we want these bigger Alexas at communities where we don't have the Wi-Fi yet in the rooms. So we're, we're starting to roll these out as a portable, and anybody who's ever bought a digital sign, they're, they're two to $3,000, and then you've got content updated. Our digital signs are using back-end APIs that we've already planned events for, and it's feeding these individual Alexa Show 15s. So, that is, that is one area, um, staff communication. So we've got a pilot running now where we've, you know, it goes back to the, at the community, there's just not enough staff. So at our headquarters, what can we automate and push out to these devices? So we're actually putting Alexa Show 15s in break rooms. So it's annual enrollment time, it's employee survey time, we can push a QR code if we wanna, you know, get a voice of the, voice of the staff instantaneously versus in the past you'd have to, send a survey out to their personal email. Maybe they don't fill it out. Maybe you don't get that interaction. So we're using them you know, on the 15s in particular. Um, the other place is the API integration. So we've got a company, they're called Align. They are senior-centric focused technology company. They actually, my predecessor at Atria is the CTO of that company. They were part of Atria. But they built a lot of, you know, think ERP, CRM, you know, back-end optimization of senior living communities. So um, Align has been our major partner on you know, the planning technology, the meal technology, 
we actually are, are looking, what more APIs can we start to pull in to personalize the experience to drive that, you know, I, my, my end goal is this is used, you know, three, four times a day. And when it's used three, four times a day, I can start to collect that data and say that Chris is having a good day or Chris is engaged. Or I could then direct my staff to the 25% of people who haven't used Alexa today. Okay, that's, that's who you need to go check on. That's who you need to go make sure they're, you know, number one, they're healthy. Two, are they happy? Three, is there something we can do for them? Because, you know, the staff, you know, they're running all around. They, they don't have the time to, you know, look at a report, say what that report tells them. They, they want that automation. So the, the passive check-ins, you know, that's, that's where we're really pushing, you know, for 2024 with this particular device because we want, we want to use it to really augment that staff, but we also want to get that two-way communication in near real time. Um, just, to, you know, like I said, you know, people age better when they're together, age better when they're happier, and the sooner we can understand that and leveraging this piece of technology to get that information, you know, the faster we can get our staff up there and, and talking to that particular resident. I love that. So it's really about, you know, how do you facilitate more communication next year? How do you do things passively? We talked about, you know, the residents don't like people interjecting on them, and so the biggest thing is, is how can you offer more at this point? So. Um, we've had a beautiful journey working with Atria. I'm loving continuing to work with the communities. I just love to see people who are able to connect with their, their dreams and their visions and other residents. And um, looking forward to seeing how this vision continues to evolve as, as we work with Atria and, and with Ava going forward. And I want to thank everybody for following us through this journey. Um, we're happy to answer any questions afterwards. But otherwise, thank you, Chris, for joining me today. And thank you, everybody, for hearing about our story. Uh, thank you all. This has been awesome. It's been, you know, it's, as, a, as a CTO, I've worked in industrial companies. I worked in pizza industry. And, I, you know, it's a passion project because, you know, my, I feel it personally with aging parents. And, you know, the more, we can, the more we can take off, you know, an adult child who's already going through a traumatic experience, moving his parent into a community, um, the better. So it's just something that's, you know, we take a lot of pride in it and, you know, loving our partnership with Amazon, loving our partnership with Ava as well. So thank, thank you, you everybody. All.